even if you have a few public performances every year, whether it's at a venue like Walt Disney Concert Hall or a conservatory like the Juilliard School, there is the potential that you're leaving money on the table that could be utilized for your career. And this is not just a few dollars per performance I'm talking about here. In this video, I actually break down my ASCAP statement from January 2021, in which I detail all the money that I made for every performance that was counted towards that statement. So before joining any performing rights organization, whether it's ASCAP or BMI here in the US, you will need to understand what these performing rights organizations actually do. So just imagine your latest masterwork, let's call it a partita for kazoo and electronics. It's being premiered at the world famous Carnegie Hall. It's actually gonna get played three times, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now you think to yourself, wow, I finally made it. I got to the end of this long, arduous journey of writing my piece, and now my masterwork for kazoo and electronics is on the stage at Carnegie Hall. Wow, you know what most composers, most musicians would be very content with that. But you know, it doesn't need to actually stop there. The life of your piece can go beyond the stage, in fact. You see, every time your partita is performed live in public, you're actually entitled to what are called performance royalties. In this case, Carnegie Hall pays ASCAP what's called a blanket license, which is a yearly fee that allows the venue to play as much music as they want by ASCAP's members. So if you aren't a member that has their works registered in one of these organizations, you are leaving money on the table that should have gone to you. How much can these royalties possibly be? I mean, it can't be any more than just a little bit of booze money, right? Well, let's see. Let's say that this partita runs us around, uh, let's say, 10 minutes. If we compare that with a similar work of mine called Shifting Sands for trumpet and electronics, this would actually come out to $200 per performance if you account for both the writer and publisher shares. So your partita could potentially earn $600 over those three days that we mentioned. Now you can imagine if this partita for kazoo and electronics were let's say 10, 15, 20 minutes longer, or if this, uh, I don't know, this kazoo and electronics piece was actually a kazoo concerto with a big orchestra in the background, you know, this dollar amount can only get bigger. For example, I have some orchestral works that collect about $1,200 per performance if you count again for the writer and the publisher shares. Okay, so now that we have all that preamble out of the way, let's go ahead and actually create one of these ASCAP accounts. First, we're gonna actually need to head over to ASCAP.com. On the left-hand side, select Music Creators, then click Join. Okay, so now that you're in this membership window, you're gonna notice that there are three categories. There's writer and publisher, writer and publisher. You can only sign up for one of these categories at this time. Now listen to me very carefully. Unless you already have a publisher, I implore you at this step to sign up as both a writer and a publisher. Do not sign up as just a writer now and then forget to sign up as a publisher later on. This is so crucial. I can't believe how many people forget this step or just don't know that they're supposed to do this step. Now, why would you do this? Let's go back to our example of the Partita for Kazoo and Electronics. Let's say that that piece is not published by a major publishing house like Shot or C.F. Peters, just to name a couple. Now. If you don't have a publisher like those big guns, for example, guess what? You, whether you know it or not, are the rightful publisher of that music. We'll find out later on in this video that if you don't sign up as a publisher at this step, you could potentially forfeit 50% of your performance royalties. So don't do that. This exact situation actually did happen to me about 10 years ago after two orchestral performances here in New York. I remember I was on cloud nine after those orchestral performances. I mean, this is a dream for any composer to have their works performed by an orchestra. But let me tell you, when I found out that I missed about half of my potential earnings, when I saw my ASCAP statement a few months later, my heart completely sank. I realized that I had lost close to $1,000 in royalties just because I didn't sign up as a publisher. After that fiasco, I vowed to myself that I would never lose a dime of any royalties that were owed to me. It was just way too painful. So please, don't do what I did sign up as a writer and a publisher at this very step. So we're gonna go ahead and click writer and publisher and then scroll down to the publisher company type. And here you're gonna click individual. That way it classifies you as the publisher of your own work. Then go ahead and click continue. 
Now at the top here, it's gonna ask you, are you currently a writer member of a different performing rights organization? Most of you are gonna say no for this, so go ahead and say no. Then you're gonna fill out your name, date of birth, US resident for tax purposes, residential address, your tax ID number, in this case, most likely your social security number, your phone number, your email, your genre, your stage name, if you have a stage name, et cetera, and you're gonna click continue. And there's gonna be all these other required documents that you need, but this is all uh, pretty easy stuff to fill out on your own. And then there's gonna be the payment at the very end, which before it mentioned that it's $100, okay? There's actually one more step that they actually don't put in for some reason, I don't know why they don't put this in on the ASCAP page, but it's to gently nudge that like button if you found any of this stuff useful for you so far. I hope so. And after you've done both of those things, you are now officially an ASCAP member that has both a writer and publisher accounts. Now on to step two of the process, it's time to register your works. So let's head back to ASCAP's homepage here and then let's click Music Creators, then Member Login. Now you can either log in as a writer or a publisher in this very same portal, but for us here to register our works, we're gonna log in as a writer. So this is my username for my writer account, then this is my password. I'm gonna go ahead and click Login here. Now you should be logged into your writer account. The next thing we're gonna do is actually go to the left-hand side again and click Works. This will be the most important thing you have to do if you've never opened up your ASCAP account before. So now we're gonna go ahead and start registering the works that we've composed. We're gonna to go to the top right-hand side here and click Register a Work. In this case, since we've been talking about this kazoo piece this whole time, we're gonna go ahead and try to register it. So let's do Partita, for kazoo and electronics. Ah, can't spell, okay, electronics. And this is where the 50% shares that I mentioned earlier comes into play. So you have here writers and publishers. Remember that writer shares must total 50%, publisher shares must also total 50%. So for our writer share here, I'm gonna put in my name here, Saad Nadim Hadan, you see that it pops up right here. Now, if you are sharing a credit for your work, let's say you collaborated with somebody else, you could put their share here as well. And what you would do is actually add the writer here. So let's say you wanna have 25%, and your collaborator has the other 25%, you can actually add them both here. So for me, let's say I wrote this entire piece on my own, so I'm gonna say that I was the composer, so I'll put composer here, and then my share is 50%. This is the maximum that I can put for writers, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And now I'm gonna add in my publisher name that is for me, Dib Press, and that's listed right here. And then my share, again, this is gonna be 50%, which is the maximum share that you can have as a publisher. Now, depending on what kind of composer you are, we're gonna to need to answer some questions here about this registered work. Since this is a partita for Kazoo and Electronics, let's answer these questions based off of that assumption, okay? So, has this work been recorded? If not, skip. Usually, I always skip this, so I'm gonna skip this. Has this work been performed? If not, skip. I also even skip this one, even if it was performed. I just find that it's not really useful to put. Now, is this work intended for a commercial film or other product? If not, skip. No, because it's a concert piece. It's a piece for Kazoo and Electronics. We'll skip this one. Is this a concert work? If not, skip. This is a concert work, right? We're getting it played at Carnegie Hall. It's a concert work, okay. Now, if this work is concert, please select what kind. Okay, so is this complete in one movement, multi-movement, or an excerpt from a larger work? Let's say that this partita is complete in one movement. So we're gonna go and hit that. Now it's gonna ask you, what's the duration? Hours, minutes, and seconds. Let's go ahead and say that it's 10 minutes long. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. The next thing you're gonna do is fill out this instrumentation line here. Here it tells you ensemble type. So if you actually look at what kind of ensemble types, a lot of them are actually kind of ridiculous. You have accordion orchestra, audience, uh, well brass quintet is a typical ensemble of course and so is a chamber ensemble of course. But if you keep scrolling down there are some kind of crazy uh, ensembles they have here. They have things like the Landler Capel or the Mandolin Orchestra for example. Um, ORF instruments, I mean, I don't know where they got these uh, names from. Uh, I mean, they're not really common 
ensembles to begin with. But for us, what we're gonna do is actually gonna skip this entirely, okay? And we're going to make our own instruments. So for our instruments, we're gonna try to find the kazoo. Where is the kazoo? I can just type it actually. There it is, kazoo. And then I'm gonna say number parts one. There's only one kazoo part. You don't need any more than one kazoo part anyway. And then we're gonna add another instrument, in this case, electronics. So you can actually type out electronics. I believe you should be able to, yes. In this case, let's say live electronics. And you can actually count this as an instrument name. So I'm gonna put number of parts, one, and then we're done with that, okay? Then the next question, does this work include a sample? If not, skip. In this case, no, it doesn't include a sample, so I'm gonna skip this. Does this work use public domain elements? If not, skip. No, I don't use any public domain elements in this one, so no. Do you know the performance time of this work? If not, skip. Again, I, I skipped this one too. I already put the duration, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip that. So in that case, I'm all done. I'm gonna go ahead and click Submit. And then within 48 hours, you should have an email from ASCAP telling you that you actually registered your work. Now, another way to make sure that your piece is actually registered with your ASCAP account is to actually go back to the works on the left-hand side here and see if that partita for kazoo and electronics is there. We see a bunch of pieces here that I already wrote. Fuga, clarinet concerto, a hummingbird told me, azwaj, etc. So the partita that we mentioned would show up in this list, and then you would know that it was actually accepted as a registered work under your ASCAP account. So let's take a look at one of the works that I already have registered here. For example, my clarinet concerto, okay? So if I click on my clarinet concerto, I see at the top left that there is the work title right there, clarinet concerto. But more importantly, we have our work ID number, which is a very specific unique ID number for every single one of your pieces. Actually, every single piece in the ASCAP database has its own unique work ID number. So this is crucial to make sure that you have. Then my status here, it's accepted. So it's accepted into the ASCAP database. Then the next important thing you have to do is go to the share list and make sure that you, as the composer or the writer, have 50% of the shares here, right? And then my publisher, in this case, did press, which is me, the, the publisher, this owns 50%. So we made sure, okay, those two add up to 100% perfect. All the royalties are accounted for. And then we see some details here. In this case, it tells me when this was last distributed. Here it's 2020 Q4, which is very good. And then let's see, we have performers and other info. And then down here we have instrumentation. This is a full orchestral work with clarinet and electronics. Uh, we have a computer here, et cetera. And we have the duration here. And then the last one down here is uh, cue sheets. In this case, I don't have any cue sheets because this is a concert work, okay? So that's all there is to it in terms of making sure that you register your work and then double checking to make sure that it's actually in there with all the right information associated with your registered work. Now, believe it or not, there's actually one other way that you can confirm that your work is registered in both your writer and publisher accounts. Let me show you how to do it. So head to the left-hand side of the page and click log out. Now I'm gonna actually log into my publisher account. So go here to my publisher account, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing here. Once I'm in, I'm gonna go to works Okay, on the left-hand side here, I'm gonna find my clarinet concerto. So it's right here. And I'm gonna go down to the share list. Once I go down to the share list, oh, there we go. We have me as the composer and did press as the publisher. So you see in both accounts, it's the same information. So that's perfect. So make sure you repeat this step for all your work so they can all be registered and all be counted every time you have a performance of any of these works. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about this process. I find it endlessly fascinating to be honest with you because I know that all the works that I'm composing in my catalog can actually keep working for me long after they've been performed, long after I've finished them. And I know that every piece that I write from here on out will continue to grow my royalty stream. The more performances I have, the further along I get into my career. And I hope it can do the same thing for you.